there are literally thousands of vulnerability disclosure programs that you can find on public platforms such as Bakra or HackerOne Integrity and so on and so forth. There are programs that you can find on private platforms such as Synac, Cobalt and other platforms. There are also programs that you can find yourself using Google Dorks. If I were at the point of choosing my first program as a bug bounty hunter, I would simply look for a program using Google Dorks. Now, why? I would do this because being able to find something yourself, therefore being self-sufficient, not relying on platforms, not relying on triagers, is a good place to start. Of course, there are um, advantages and disadvantages to this. Uh, one of the biggest disadvantage uh, is that it may actually take a good while until you find a good program where the security team is actually very responsive. Let me give you an example. So in one of the programs uh, that uh, I worked on that had a disclosure policy that I found on via Google Dorks, I would be receiving responses from the security team at a frequency of two weeks. So that's a lot of time. And then pay, I was paid for the reports after more than two months. So obviously this is not very motivating. You wanna find, you wanna focus on programs that are responsive on security teams that are responsive. Not necessarily maybe you send them a submission today and you get a response in a couple of hours, but at least uh, in one or two days. Like I said, a very good place to start is to actually try to find programs yourself using Google Dorks. And when you find a good program, you want to have a good direct channel of communication with the security team without having interference from the platforms and triagers. This is a good thing. Google Dork that you can start with. So you can just go to Google and type in responsible disclosure reward you can just uh, go from there yeah, that's that's excellent advice to add on to to what you said i think also, also having an understanding of of you know the types of vulnerabilities that you are going to try and find is really important or having a focus uh, and of course i say that uh, you know knowing that bug bounties can be a bit of a, a a bit of a random affair in regards to what you'll find uh, but I think learning a particular vulnerability first and how to exploit it, how it works, and then going out in the wild, reading reports, learning how the, the, this particular vulnerability can be exploited is really important. So I, I think factoring that also in, into your decision is very important. But as, as you rightfully pointed out, um, I think starting out with... Uh, with ones uh, in which you know the uh, the, the disclosure is, is with the developer team or the security team is much quicker in regards to the response, so that you you actually you, you make some progress instead of it being you know it it taking maybe one or two months. Whenever I've told uh, you know anyone who asks me this, I, I've usually told them to start off with sites that are are local to them. Now let let, let me explain this. So. Uh, the reason I say that is because they're already familiar with these platforms, right? And when I say sites that are local to you, I mean sites that are probably within your geographic location or provide services to your geographic location, starting out with sites that you know. And of course, not all of them will have, uh, you know, uh, uh, responsible disclosure or a disclosure for that matter. So you need to, you know, pick and choose which one uh, actually has that. But uh, I've seen some great results with this because they actually know how to use the site. It's, it's important to them and they're, they're much more likely to be in incentivized by more than just money. Level up your skills in bug bounty hunting and penetration testing with my course Recon in Cybersecurity and master the fascinating world of reconnaissance. Link below.